Good afternoon, welcome to Liquid Brain. So this is the first video of the five-part video series on data manipulation and transformation using DPLIR in our studio. So if you don't know that uh, DPLIR is a very commonly used tool for how do you, you know, transform and structure a data so that you can fit into other uh, libraries such as ggplot2 is one of the greatest examples. So there, there are many reason why you do that because first of all uh, unlike uh, data studio uh, ggplot2 doesn't have that kind of filtering doesn't that kind of summarization built into it so you need to use something else to arrange the data and then pipe to ggplot2 and then of course to ggianimate so if you don't already understand that two package i make a video um, where here where you can actually look at it after you look at this video and in, in those two videos i actually use a little bit of uh, this data population in order to transform the data into the format that I want. So without without wasting time, well, there's five things that I need to focus on. So let's go down first here. So in, in the, the first video will be focused on the filter functions in DPOIR, and the second video will be focusing on arrange. That video will be focusing on select. The fourth one, mutate, and the fifth one, summarize. So Follow every video, there will be a little bit of exercise that I'm going to go through with you within the video on how do you solve the problem and what is the logic of the code and why do we put certain things in a certain way. So if you are a user yourself, I'll suggest you to pause the video, uh, download the exercise from the... Actually, you can download this script file from the link in the video description down below, which will bring you to a website and it will bring you to a Google document and we should have to copy paste into our studio. So this is also code in the R Markdown format. So if you want to use this, you actually have to go to uh, new over here and just uh, create an R notebook and copy it into that rather than using a normal R script. If you use R script, it will not work because you know it's a little bit of formatting difference between R script and uh, our notebook over here. So let's go to the beginning. So what uh, we're gonna do today is mostly focus on the data set called NYC Flight 13, um, which is a, a library that contains all the raw data in New York City in the year 2013. So if you don't already know how to install package, you can just go to package over here. There's an install button. Just go to install and type NYC uh, flights. Okay, so you can also install DPLR for the time being. So let you have both of them installed in your environment and you can just load them using the library command over here using the run button. Okay, so that will ensure that uh, these two libraries is contained within your environment before you even start analysis. So the first thing I usually do is to check the dimension of the data as well as the structure of the data. Okay, so you can see the first uh, dimension will give us 336776. That's 336,000 different rows and 19 different columns. So that will tell us roughly how big is the data and are we able to handle our data uh, on your local computer first of all. If not, you know, try to look for some other alternative. Okay, so the second structure is a little bit more detailed. So you will tell us that it is a data frame and it's actually a table. It's a slightly modified version of the data frame so that it works better with the tiny verse uh, thing. So you can see there are months, there are year, there are departure time, there's arrival time, there's arrival delay, what is the carrier, so what is the flight number, origin, destination, and so on and so forth. So this is just all the details in the data set. Of course, uh, we have integers, we have double, we have characters, and we have DTTM. In this case, they are displayed as POSIX, so POSIX. So I don't know how to pronounce that, but it's actually a very popular date time format. If you want to do direct calculation in between the two, it will directly give you uh, a duration. So that's actually a very convenient format in some way. Okay, there are also something like a factor, date, and logical. So those we will go through it later on if you uh, go through. So the, the first thing I really like uh, about doing in our studio is it's not necessarily, but you know, it's just a personal preference. I like to pipe the data into itself. So what, it, what, what happens here is that the flight's data is already present in the environment because of the library that we loaded earlier. But what do I do is that I will actually pipe it into themselves. So what, once you run this, uh, this thing will actually appear in your global environment where you can click in and you can have a look at data in a table format. So this will provide a much uh, familiar format if you're coming from, let's say, uh, Google Excel sheet or you're using 
yeah, you're using a normal spreadsheet or environment, this will provide you an easier way to look at it. Okay, so let's go into the first one, which is filter. So filter is our first, a very common tool if you use Google Sheets or Excel before. It's just what roles do I want, basically. Okay, so the first one, very straightforward. Let's look at the first example. Uh, filter flights uh, month equals to one. So in this case, you actually look at the data over here. You can actually look at months equals to one means it's all the flight in January. So in this case, uh, once you run uh, this command, it will actually show you that there's 27,000 rows. So out from the 336,000 different rows, uh, we, we have filtered to only 27,000 rows, which is all, all whole happen uh, within January directly. So this is fairly straightforward, I hope. So the, the second thing you need to understand about DPLIR is the piping function. So this is extremely, extremely popular and you just see it everywhere and people don't usually explain what it does. So what it does is that uh, instead of writing it just now where it's filter function, uh, the data and the parameters, uh, the, the piping function will replace the one earlier as the first variable. So in this case, um, the yeah here. So these two equation, so this filter equation is the same as this filter equation. It just put flights into this position and it runs unusual. So if we run this, you see that we get exactly twenty seven thousand uh, rows, exactly the same as the one just now. They just um, present in different format so that it's easier if you uh, have more things to do down below. You you see what happens later. Okay, so this is also a second function where we use um, a straight line. So in this case, a straight line is an and function, uh, or function. So the the syntax over here is very similar to other platforms such as Google Sheets, where and is you know uh, you need both to be fulfilled before you choose both of them, and a straight line is or, and the uh, what is that called? Uh, exclamation mark is the opposite. So in this case, let's look at our first example is that if we use this command, we'll filter the rows based on the month is 11 or the month is equal to 12. So everything in November and December will be included. Okay, so if we run this command, you actually see all the month in November is here. Actually, let's go for the last one and there should be some uh, 12 in between here or they're just not present in the database at all. Okay, maybe not present. Let's try, try another one. So let's try one and two over here. So just to make sure things works. Okay, so you have one and let's go to the last one. Hmm. Okay, so I have no understanding of how it works. So let's just try to pipe it to another temporary format just to check if it works. Okay, just check the temporary format. So obviously uh, now we look at it, it kind of works because just now for the first month we have 27,000. Well, now we have 51,000. So if we sort this again, yeah, we have one and two. So it's just that when we are using a preview directly within the R markdown itself, uh, it doesn't show all, the, all of them. So yeah, it, it doesn't show all of them. It only show a thousand uh, rows. So you need to actually go down here to see the difference between them. So let's just change back and so not to confuse ourselves. Okay, so it works. Okay, so the, the other way of using a or and and in command, uh, sorry, or and and not command is actually something called uh, percent in percent. So percent in percent is actually everything between the vector in the back. So in this case, uh, running this and running this is exactly the same meaning where we want to filter uh, flights based on a month variable contains 11 or 12. As long as that 11 or 12, they should be um, included directly in the day. So you can actually see November has 54,000 uh, as well. So if we actually run this again, we should get similar. Uh, yeah, we get exactly the same uh, result. So in this case, uh, I will actually I can also rewrite the uh, command using the piping function, which is flight, and we use this. Okay, so we can actually pipe this into the uh, filter functions and it will actually run exactly the same. So there's no difference between these two lines, just a different way of presentation. So familiar yourself with it because you're going to use it a lot, a lot later on. Okay, so the next one also is uh, using a little bit more combination of the thing that we 
talk about just now. So in this case, uh, having an exclamation mark uh, reverse the condition. So in this case, arrival delay is more than 120 and departure delay is more than 120. So we are trying to filter out those that are delayed for more than two hours. But when the inverse the whole thing means we want to know everything below uh, 120 minutes in that case. So this is equals to this because the, the reverse here actually changed the whole parameters. Yeah, I think, I think it's kind of straightforward where uh, you have an or of both of them and you reverse it, it's the same as you include both of them. So in this case, we are trying to find the flights that have not been delayed for longer than two hours basically. Okay, so uh, that is the basic of filter. Now we're going into our exercise. So if you want to find the exercise, you can go to the link down below and you can download uh, their both version, one with the result and one without. So you, you can try out either, it doesn't really matter. So we have three questions here that we want to solve. So the first one is that we want to find the, all the flights that have an arrival delay of two or more hours, so more than two hours basically. And we need to find the first one is that flew to Houston. So there's a place in USA that operated by United America and Delta. So that's a different type of carrier uh, departure in summer only. So we only find when we want to filter out the months that's July, August and September. Or, and we also want to find arrive more than two hours late, but didn't leave, uh, sorry, arrive more than two hours late, but didn't leave late. So the departure is on time, but arrival is late basically. So, and the last one is departure between midnight and 6 a.m. So, okay, so zero to six basically. So another useful filtering function is between. So between is the one that can actually help us to find things that are between a certain number. So in this case, you can actually just go here, type down between and it should, yeah. Yeah, my internet is not not really working right now. So in this case, you usually can find uh, the, the help that you want. I think packages. Yeah, usually you can find a function that you want over here. But yeah, my, my internet is not working right now. So I, I'm not able to do that. But you can also just Google the documentation and see the syntax between that. So uh, it will actually help to simplify the code. So we'll show you how later. So how many flight has been missing uh, departure time? So we have to find uh, the rows that have missing data and what the variable are missing, uh, what could this row represent? Well, obviously, we can uh, go through that later. So let's go through our first question, which is uh, has an arrival time of two and more hours. Okay, so uh, the first uh, parameter here is arrive uh, of more than 120 minutes. So in this case, the arrival time is later than two hours. And we need to secondly filter based on the destination. So Houston is IAH or HOW. So we're gonna use the um, within uh, syntax over here where the destination, which is actually the name of the uh, parameter here. Where is it, where is it, where is it? Uh, yeah, so destination over here. So we use the name of the variable, so use the name of the column and then we use a vector over here to indicate that we want destination to be between, uh, sorry, to, to be IA, IAH or HOW. So you can use the, the OR syntax over here. Both will work exactly the same. So we can actually run this and we can see we got a 220 line basically. So we can also do the same thing where we just put a carrier is between the three of them. So if you need to know the name of the individual uh, acronyms or short form of the airline, you can also go to Wikipedia. There's a, a long list of uh, short form you can refer to for all the American A line. So in this case, uh, United uh, is UA, uh, Delta is DL, American airline is AA. So this will actually give us uh, 3,200 rows to actually indicate that all the flight from this three carrier that has a de arrival delay of more than two hours basically. Okay, so the next one is the same concept where we want to have July, August, and September where we put the name of the variable and we put it in between, sorry, within uh, seven, eight, and nine. Between is a, is a, is a different function. In this case, it's a within, okay? So the next one, of course, is the arrival is 120, exactly the same, and departure less than zero means it doesn't departure late because the departure time is actually 
zero. So you can actually go here and actually find departure time. Where is it? I can't actually see the screen, so I need to do that. Okay, so departure delay over here. So you can see departure delay, there are certain negative number. So in this case, negative number indicates that leave the uh, airport earlier than the actual scheduled departure date. So that's slightly earlier. So you can see this is uh, actual departure date. Uh, sorry, the scheduled departure date is 515, mean 5 o'clock in the morning, 515 in the morning, while the actual departure date is 517, which has a delay of two minutes. So similar logic apply where if the scheduled departure time is 545 and the actual departure time is 544, there is a departure delay of minus one, which is the flight have actually left the airport one minute early than it should be. Okay, so the last one is actually um, we need to find the flight between 0 to 6. So it doesn't say anything about delay. So we have not included that parameter, but the same concept of apply where we just say hours is uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So hours actually also within the data frame. You can see go to the last, you can actually see an hour parameter over here. So yeah. Okay, so you can actually see over here the so 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 is between midnight and 6 a.m. Okay, so the second one is actually the... Uh, another useful you are is between. So you are function is between. So I think when I copy paste something got missing over here. So what does it do and how do you simplify? So in this case, between is uh, you want to specify two different things like the 0 to 6 just now. So of course, when the elements number is very small, like 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, it's only seven different elements. Uh, it could be, in certain situation, it could be from 1 to 25,000. So if you want to filter everything between 1 to 25,000, there's no way you're going to type it out individually, uh, manually. So we can use something called between. So in this case, the syntax, between, uh, syntax of between is the name of the variable the starting variable and the ending variable. So actually, I should actually put a zero over here. So you can see that just now we got 25,000 row, now we got 27,000 row. So there might be a different calculation between the syntax here. I have no idea, but, but the concept is similar. Actually, we should actually try to check that out. So our zero minute. So it could be an inclusive and exclusivity difference between um, I have no idea. I'm going to check and, and, and I, I'm going to link it down in the description or you're going to see some cars in the video uh, uh, over here after I edit it. But there, there should be some uh, exclusivity and inclusivity, uh, you know, the little bit of difference between because there's only like a thousand of them that's different. Okay, so the last one is how many flights has a missing departure time and what the variable are missing, what might this uh, row Represent. So if we run the data, you will realize that the departure time is not available, a uh, departure delay also not available, a viral time not available, and arrival delay not, not available. So in this case, most likely, of course, the, the flight is cancelled, that never actually took off the ground. So of course, we don't have this parameter, but we do have the schedule, we do have the original time and date where it's supposed to fly, but it didn't. Okay, so that actually sum up our filter. So the, the syntax of filter, our variable is rel filter function relatively straightforward. Include the name of the column and certain conditions, whether it's if it's a larger, smaller, equal, and of course you can use some helper functions like uh, and or not uh, between and so on in order to filter out the rows that you want based on the condition that you put in. So uh, we'll see you in the second video about 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 a range. So we'll we'll see you over there in a few seconds. Bye.